I'm Ann Lawless with the American Precision Museum. We had some damage from Tropical Storm Irene. We're still in the process of fundraising and planning our recovery three years after the event, and everybody needs to learn more about how waterways and streams behave. We are thrilled to have the Ottaquiche Natural Resources Conservation District here demonstrating with their stream table. Usually when we think of flooding, we think of the Mississippi River or Lake Champlain, the water goes over the bank. We call that inundation. We could have a house over here and the water goes over the bank and they get a wet basement and the water might sit there for a week or two and then eventually settle down. That's called inundation. In much of Vermont, the problem is just the opposite. The water can't get over the bank because our rivers are too deep, our valleys are too steep, and if it can't get over the bank, it's going to erode by cutting into the bank. And we call that fluvial erosion. And so what happens is, often this house, which is down in the floodplain even, will get a wet basement, maybe a wet floor. This house, this water coming around, is cutting under the bank. If we give it a little bit more volume, There she goes. And this is where 69% of the damage of Irene came from. Not because water went over the banks, but because water cut under the banks. It could not get out of the, out of the river channel, so instead it cut underneath. That is our big problem in Vermont. It's almost counterintuitive because you think if you dug the river deeper, you'd be safer when in fact you dig the river deeper and you're causing all even more problems. First thing we try to explain to people is that rivers carry water, sediment, and debris. We concentrate on the water and the sediment here. And sediment could be anything from sand or little stones up to the size of Volkswagens. The more water volume and the faster the water velocity, the more and the bigger the sediment will be that it carries downstream. So the night of Irene, we had tremendous volume and tremendous velocity, and as a result of that, you had these huge boulders coming down. The next morning, the water receded. It could not or did not need all that sediment to stay in balance, so it just kind of dropped it on the shores or in the middle of the rivers, and you see these islands. The second thing to keep in mind is rivers, especially as they enter the valleys, will always meander. The meander pattern is almost like a skier coming down a hill. The skier comes around and if he's making a left turn, his right side ski, his outside ski has to go faster. So the faster the outside ski goes, the faster the water goes, it erodes more than the inside ski. So outside ski is cutting into the bank, inside ski is depositing. This is a cut bank and this is a point bar. As the water comes around going from one turn to another, it's almost like your ski is flattening out, there's less pressure, and that's where you often see riffles in the, in the river. If the first skier comes down, makes a track, the second skier follows in the same tracks and is pushing the curve out and down. Third skier pushes it more and more. The water does the same thing, so this cut bank is going to be moving downstream over time and it will move from side to side. So we can be pretty certain that someday this cut bank here will be down here, which means the road might fall in. Watch what happens if I straighten the river here. Oh, there goes went our went road. Watch what happens if, I, I'm going to take this out for a minute. So here is someone who says, gee, the river used to be over there. I want to move it back. All right, so he's going to move this soil over here and make it straight. That's gonna take out the meander, which means then the water is gonna go faster and it will erode more. So watch what happens here when I do this. See the spurt coming down and how much more erosion because we just took out that meander. And he also made it straight. Yes, and we straightened it out. And what's happening already? the river's finding a new meander pattern. So that's why we say we know that, especially in the valleys, if the river is straight, people did it. And they're gonna have to keep doing it 
and as they keep doing it, they're causing damage upstream and downstream because they're making the river go faster. Now getting back to the idea of volume and velocity, if I have a river that's in balance and I dig a hole, I've changed the slope, which means the water goes faster. If the water goes faster, it's going to erode. So if we watch what happens here, I'm going to dig, and you can see how it's eroding all the way up the river here. The other thing that happens is when you dig the hole, you get the cut bank upstream, the water coming over the hole flows over the hole, but its sediment falls into the hole, filling it up. That water keeps going downstream, but it has no sediment. As a result of that, it's going to try to find new sediment, and you'll start getting more erosion downstream. So removing gravel can affect everything up and down the river. One of the other issues that happens is that if you have a culvert that is too narrow, we have a wide channel and then it narrows, the water slows down as it comes to the culvert because it can't move as quickly. And as a result of that, it is going to back up. And one of two things happens. It goes over the culvert or it washes out the culvert. And when it washes out the culvert, you tend to get a big burst of water. So during Irene, you had small culverts, water coming down that the culvert couldn't handle at all. The water backed up, so it was almost like a dam. The culvert gave, it was like a dam giving, and it washed things out that were downriver. So what might have been a structure that could have handled Irene was destroyed because there was so much water coming from the top. Most people who run excavators build roads. So if you've been building a road from Windsor over to Springfield, nobody wants you to build a meandering road. You've been trained all your life to build a straight road. When you're dealing with rivers after Irene and we're trying to put them back together again, we have to keep that into consideration. So it's a, it's a different mindset. It isn't the skills of machine operation that we're working on. Those people know how to do it. They can do anything with their machines. It is what we would like them to do with the machines, what we want accomplished.